Hey there, Nicole Frost of Frost Yarn. In today's tutorial, we're going to be learning how to make an ethereal cloud gradient using a double step process, speckling, and resists. So if you want to know how we take this reference image and turn it into this beautiful gradient, that creates a swatch like this, then follow along. Step one, and I like to do this in a two-step process, is that we're gonna speckle the yarn in heat set, and we're gonna dry it and come back after it's done. Tie resists, over dye. But we gotta start with the speckles. You technically can dye it with resists, cut the resists and try to speckle in those little areas, but I don't think it looks as clean and you don't have as much control. So I am gonna take three, strip off, oops, looks like a skein wants to come along, strip off the excess water and lay them out like so. Gotta make sure they aren't tangled in any way. So I lay them on a big baking sheet. You can do this on plastic wrap and steam it. You can do this on, um, in one of these types of trays right over here. But I like doing it on the baking sheet because this gets wrinkles in the skein that don't get any speckles. And just kind of spreading them out so that I can get maximum speckle coverage in the skein. Any overlapping area is going to be a white spot. And we want a lot of speckles. T technically, you can speckle one side, heat set, flip it while it's still hot, speckle the other side, but speckling cold, flipping, speckling while it's still cold will give you smears, like a lot of smears. So I have all of my salt shakers, 50% salt, 50% dye, and I label them with each color. And because we want rainbow all over instead of pink orange yellow green blue purple we're going to speckle rainbow all over but we got to go lighter than we ultimately want because the speckles will grow so especially the hot pink now as i'm seeing look how it's start it's landed and it's going to start to get bigger so i'm going to go strategically there we go. Now we're just going to do that with the orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And take our citric acid water, spray over the top. So our skeins are done, and if you'll notice, they're kind of bare on the back side and heavily speckled on the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold all those speckles as much as we can inside. We're going to use a reclosable zip tie, the short ones, like I think there's six inches, over it so that we keep all as many of the speckles to the inside of the resist as possible. So we tie one, two, three, four, five, and we'll come back when we're ready to die. Trixie would like to say hello. You want to say hi? Hi. So why do we put the ties on dry? Well, I spent from 2008 to 2014 doing heavy research and development. I wanted a black skein with fluorescent rainbow speckles in 2008. I had no idea what an odyssey it would be to get to that point and how many failed experiments and thousands of skeins and dollars wasted. I, there was a fireball that came out of my dad's oven one time. Um, I didn't know what the symbol for flammable was on the Japanese Sukuneko ink. Anyway, don't put it in the oven. So anyhow, if you wet your skeins out, the dye will migrate under the ties. And, you know, we want a really quick strike so that we keep all of these speckles that are underneath here bright because we're going to be over dyeing the whole thing 
a series of colors that normally, one, two, three, four, I need one more, normally would brown the skein. But we really want this ethereal, cloud-like, lots of shifts of color um, effect. And that means, this is my little recipe. I'm gonna put it in on the computer, but it's basically 0.1 hot pink, 0.1 lily rose, 0.05 violet, because violet is incredibly saturated, 0.15 bright aqua, because it's not very saturated, and 0.1 spearmint and radioactive. I'm adding radioactive even though it's not a very pretty green because I want these to fluoresce under black light. And um, now we're gonna go prepare the dye baths and submerge these and then we'll come back, cut the resists, put them out in the sun and see how it turned out. Hot pink from ProChem and we just want 0.1. So it should be a pretty small amount. Yeah, it's a little bit more than that. Too far. There we go. Put it in the tray. Not a lot of dye. We fill this with really hot water. And we want it to go almost to the top. We're just gonna be putting one skein in. Gonna bring this up to a boil. And the reason we want this literally, I'm gonna as soon as it starts to boil, I take it off and I put it at 200 because we want the fastest strike possible. So a really hot, really acidic bath. Now that it's right at temperature, we're gonna get this yarn in. And I like to use tongs. I'm gonna flip it. We want to get it as submerged as possible, as quickly as possible, and then bring the temperature down. So I'm going to make a spur of the moment decision because I want this to be really noticeably pink. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of pink speckling over the uh, areas that don't have a resist. And now we're going to do the same thing with all the other baths and come back when we're ready to cut the resist. Here is the finished effect next to the reference image and as you can see we have these tiny little spots of white to represent the tops of the clouds and we also have a really beautiful progression where each color has the speckling and the background color of it that goes all the way through. So anyway I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and check out Nomad's new 21 micron bases. Mm -hmm.